When people think about, you know, going to a bookstore or, or their local library, they obviously think about books. But what comes to mind when you think about a book? Words. You know, you can't really see what a book story is through its words. But, you know, Chip Kid serves to change that. Kid serves to give books identities. Visual identities that people can look at. People can look at a cover of a book and immediately contemplate what that book would be about. Kid was born in 1964 in a small Pennsylvania town. You know, I knew Kid as a kid, and as kids, when Kid was a kid, he would kid around a lot. But when it came to when it came to designing and graphic design, he was he was serious. Kid grew up allured by American pop culture, and he was especially intrigued by Batman. Kid studied graphic design at Pennsylvania State University, graduating in 1986. Kid claims to be Batman's number one fan. In 1996, along with photographer Jeff Spear, Kid designed, wrote, and edited an art book that showcases Batman memorabilia, comics, and toys through the ages. On the cover is a photo of a Batman collectible figurine, along with Batman boxes on the left. The cover embodies the 1940s and 1950s aesthetic of Batman that Kit and other fans and collectors love so well. The colors, lots of primary colors including yellow and red, are reminiscent of comic book covers. The cover also shows, without too much telling, what the book will be about. Batman's costume is iconic, and this is a shot of the Batman toy in an interesting, unexpected sort of way, with how Batman's gaze is tilted down instead of at the reader. Well, Chip Kid's book jackets are incredibly unconventional, and they take huge risks, but those risks do pay off. Um, his work just sets him apart from any other book jacket designer out there and his work's just incredibly unique. For example, with one of his, uh, one of his books, The Secret History, uh, in 1992, he, uh, he, his task was to merge classical antiquity with modern day uh, themes. And so what he did was he, he, he created a sort of a synthesis, a symbiotic relationship between, between a uh, Hellenistic Greek statue combined with a modern sort of typography. And the typographic choice was actually very, very effective in offsetting and even in a sort of complementary contrast to the, to the uh, picture of the Greek statue. And that was a very, very good move. After graduating in 1986, Kidd was hired at Knopf Publishing House as a junior assistant. There he began creating book jacket designs quickly making a name for himself with his idiosyncratic humor and style. He became so successful that writers began to contractually request him to design covers for their books. One of the more unorthodox designs that Chip Kidd created was for David Sedaris's book, Naked, which is his collection of essays, and his design was a wraparound book jacket that featured a picture on its surface of male boxer shorts. And Chip Kidd said this about his challenge, that the hardest thing to do for him is to be funny. Because he said, when you mess up being funny, you end up being dignified or just plain dumb. So his book jacket, when removed, features an x-ray of a human pelvis on the actual hardcover of the book, which is a very unique and interesting take on the jacket design. Kid based his idea for Dry's cover off of typography and denial. Dry is Augustine Burroughs' memoir about his time in rehab. He was a hotshot ad executive in his 20s, but also a raging alcoholic. He, however, refused to believe so. Kid incorporated this idea of desperate denial into the cover for this book. You should expect that the word looks like what it says, but the typography for the book cover is the opposite. The word dry looks wet. It is, in fact, wet, because Kid printed it on water-soluble ink, taped it to the wall, and then threw a bucket of water at it. The aesthetic of the word opposes its meaning in such a way that the book lies to you, the reader, desperately and hopelessly like an alcoholic who doesn't want to admit his problem would. 
The book jacket is connected to the book that it covers not only physically but also figuratively. In 1Q84, there are parallel planes of existence in the story that straddle both fantasy and reality. To showcase this parallelism, Kidd took the idea of different planes and went with it. The result is a book jacket that is on semi-transparent vellum and the face of the girl beneath it on the paper board cover. When placed over each other, you see a hazy glimpse of the girl, but also of the title that the book is cut out. The cover manages to show the duality of the story. Even if you know nothing about the book, when you pick it up, you're forced to consider a person and the two planes of existence that she inhabits. The book itself, along with the transparent jacket, invites exploration, consideration, and touch. One of his uh, most successful book designs was for a book that many probably have not read, but many probably have seen the film adaptation of it. And his design was for Michael Crichton's uh, Jurassic Park. And he immediately went to Bones when he thought about you know, his task, which was obviously dealing with di dinosaurs and paleontology. And his design was ultimately adapted to be the face of the franchise of, uh, Jurassic, of the Jurassic Park movie series. Currently, Kidd serves as the associate art director at Knopf. His success knows no bounds. USA Today has called him the closest thing to a rock star. Author James Elroy has called him the world's greatest book jacket designer. And Time Out New York has added that history of book design is split into two eras, that before graphic designer Chip Kidd and that after. Wishing to know more about Chip Kidd, we asked several experts to meet us in a dimly lit basement. I mean, I, I don't know what you want me to say, you know, he's, he's, he's clearly the godfather when it comes to this stuff. It's a book jacket designing and all that. And graphic designing, creative designing, interior designing. You know, he's one of the OGs when it comes to this stuff, you know? Like, I don't even read books, but I only buy them just to look at the pretty pictures that he puts on the covers. Yeah. You know, when it comes to graphic design, Especially book jacket design. And hold on, I gotta, gotta get my protein in. You know, he when it comes to those things, he he clearly lifts. Like his book jackets can probably bench twice as much as I can. I gotta do some push-ups. Chip Kid's designs are just beautiful. They're beautiful, but there's something pa about them past their superficiality. They hold some substance and they express a meaning that is so unique and so cunning, it's almost detached from the book itself.